Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Session Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education in Love series. In the Facing My Fear of Emotion Q&A presentation, Jesus answers questions from the audience about the material covered in the previous presentation Facing My Fear of Emotion. Recorded on the 24th of February 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Okay, so now let's examine the situation of a fear of emotions. So I said I'd come back to die there. Um, yeah. So the, the situation you were talking about uh, was a situation where you can feel some rage in you towards men. You've not been personally harmed by men very much in your life. And, and as far as you're aware, you haven't been sexually abused by men in your life. And yet you have quite a lot of yeah. anger with men. Yeah. And so, so what do we do with that emotion? Yeah, so what I've been doing is I've like taking myself off and I'm, I haven't been waiting for Alan to say anything often, you know, like I'll just recognise I've got the, you know, this resentment and this stuff yeah. and I'm thinking, you know, like it's wrong. Like I, kn I know intellectually it's yeah. wrong. So, so when you feel this resentment, yeah. um, what do you feel, um, where, where do you feel it's from? Yeah. Well, when I, I, I just go into, we've got a walk-in wardrobe and it's great. I can go in there, close the door and yeah, I can Hardly anybody out. can hear you. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, great. It's and so I could just really get myself, you know, feeling it and yeah. owning it rather than sending it out. Yeah. And um, I, I just can feel this, like, I just want to destroy, you know. It's like, but I feel like it, it's come from my mother yeah. into me, like, so what happened to your mother? I, I look. Do you know? I, I've asked her. She was the youngest. I've asked her. You know, like what was your childhood like? And was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I was happy and all that. Yeah. But she was the youngest. I think she copped a lot from her older sisters. Really, right. you know. So where but, does her hatred of men come from, though? Yeah, like I know from her mother, perhaps. Or can you see yeah. that? Can you see that something? Uh, well, there's two issues here, I feel. Yeah, okay. One issue is that you've got a, a, ge a genealogy yeah. where all the women have been angry with men yeah. and resentful of men, and yet they haven't really had any good reason to be angry and resentful of no. men. So, no. So, so that's interesting in itself, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. So where does this anger and resentment of men come from if it's not a part of their personal experience? Yeah. That, that's the question, right? Yes, it is. Right. So, so the second thing is, how do I then address this emotion if, if I've not had a personal experience where men have been treating me badly yeah. and I'm just angry with them? Now, why are you angry with them? Can you see why you're angry? Um, it There's a very it, specific reason why. Yeah, you, okay. Yep. It feels like um, I'm, I just can't not getting what i want i want Spot what on. i want so yeah, you much. want what you want yep. i do yep. yeah so so you want something you want the man to deliver it yep right yep. he has to deliver it yep. so that from the man and when he doesn't give it to you right you just go ballistic at him yeah yep, yep. okay yep. yep now now what what that does so, so this is an issue where in the past you've been given things mm. by men when you shouldn't have been. Yeah. You follow me? Yes. And I you've come to that. expect them. Yes. You, you've come to demand them yep. from men. And, and now you believe that love, you've associated love and worth with the fact that you get things from men. Yes. Now, can I point out the majority of your ladies have got a problem with this? And even the ones that are married, the majority of you have got a problem with this, right? Where, because most of the men, not all of them, but most of the men that you're with, 
let you get away with murder if they could. So this is a big problem. So, so where does this big demand, this big want come from? It comes from a childhood of having had your demands met yep. by men. Yep. Right? And, and your mother probably having the same demand met by men. Right. You follow? Yeah. Uh, uh, f from my... From her father, I'm saying. Oh, from her father. Yeah, yes. not because my father yeah, didn't no. please my mother. No, she's going to attract the opposite. Yeah, yeah, she's going to attract the opposite. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but her father, I'm trying to yeah, say. Yeah, who died very young too. Yeah, or, and yeah. he's also a, men pl a woman pleaser. Woman pleaser, right? Yeah. So, so her father treats her woman pleaser. Like, so, so now she grows up. Yeah. So by the time she's an adult, she wants a man who pleases her. Now, in her case, she attracted a man opposite oh, to that. Absolutely. So, so that's great because it yeah, well, helps her deal with it. it. But what did she do? The rage came at me. Yeah, she got more. <laughs> my sister so much. Why? Because <laughs> he did more for you guys than she, he did for her. Right? Because what's he feeling? He's feeling this terrible rage from his wife, very hard to connect emotionally and sexually to his wife. So what he does is he, get, he, he kicks into his addiction, yeah. connects to his daughters. And it was me. It's not my sister so much. It yeah. was me. Yeah, so he then panders to the daughter. Yeah. So she grows up believing that that's what men do. Men who love you, that's what they do. Yeah, yeah. Right? So she's now an adult. She enters relationships and she expects every man to do exactly what she wants. And when, and when, yep. when they don't, right, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Like they're, they're, they're no good men anymore, right? Yeah. And, and what you've done now is you've met a nice man, yeah. but, but um, and you know he's nice, mm. and this is what's causing you to <laughs> start to look at yeah. your behaviour with yeah. it, which is great. Yeah. But but can you see the thing that has to be released here is the emotional demand yeah. upon men yeah. to do what to do what you want. Yeah. Right. And you and the problem with with you is and the problem with many women in this position is that is that you've associated love and worth. Yeah. Right. And you've made the association between love and worth and, and men pandering to you. Yep. So to you, a man pandering to you is love. Yeah. Right? Yep. Now, in this process, what's going to have to break down is the fact that you've got to start seeing, no, if a man's pandering to you, all he's doing is meeting your addictions and that's not yep. love. Yep. And it's obviously harmful to him too because yep. there's a power issue here. You're wanting power. Yeah. And, uh, and you're demanding power yep. and when he gives it to you, you only, you only feel satisfied when he gives it to you. And in fact, you think he's a nice guy then, right? And so you don't get angry under those circumstances. But when he doesn't give it to you, bang, the anger is triggered. Yeah, it, <coughs> it's feeling more uncomfortable like when, of I, course. when I see, the when more, I feel that. Yeah. yeah, the more truthful you become with yourself, yeah. the more uncomfortable yeah. addictions become. Yeah. And then after a while they feel icky, yeah. you know, as Mary says, and, yeah. and, and a, as a result of feeling and right, a bit sleazy and that you, you yeah. stop backing off and you start examining yeah. but before that point in time you're happy with it yeah right and this yeah. is what the problem is so 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 in this case the emotions you're afraid of that you or the emotions you don't want to address is that the feeling that you're not being loved if somebody isn't doing what you want yeah yeah you follow yeah yeah, yeah. i i just when I touch that, it's like I just feel like I'm nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Which is not true. No. no you actually no. believe yourself to be superior. Oh, yes, I do. Right. I do. And that's why you can demand it. Yes. But this is this is what's happened by your father feeding this, like giving you everything you wanted emotionally. Yeah. Right. And and entering an incestuously emotional relationship with you, yeah. what what it's actually done is it's taught you that you can demand from men the same kind of love, mm. and that's real love. So your definition of love is out, yeah. and as a result of that, you're going to have to release your definition of love emotionally, right? This idea that love means that a man will do what I want yeah. needs to be released. Okay. Right, yeah, because it because it doesn't mean that at all. Yeah, love is a gift from the man. See, at the moment, you don't even recognise anything Alan gives you as a gift. No, it's like intellectually, I, I like I can read that and go, okay, hmm. what where where I'm at is wrong, because if love is a gift, 
then then you can't demand it. I can't demand it, mm. and this feeling that I have about it mm. is wrong. Mm-hmm. That's but, but that's, you got to be careful yeah. now judging it rather than feeling okay. it. Yeah, don't you? So, so yeah. you need to feel yeah. how much you want the addiction met, and what the addi- if the addiction is not met, what emotion it prevents you from experiencing because that's the emotion you need to experience. Okay, and rather than try to know that to to feel in the go moment, through yeah. the feeling. So when you when you're angry, you're there, you know, in your. <laughs> Yeah, in, in, your, the war, in, in the wardrobe. In the war, wardrobe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, building roads are great for processing. Yeah, I know. Uh, they buffer a lot of noise. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you go in there and you feel your anger and you get really angry. Let yourself feel angry and resentful and everything. But then feel, uh, what, what is it that I'm resentful about? Like, you need to let yourself yeah. go further. Find out what it is that you're resentful about. And, and you're afraid to do that. Mm-hmm. at this stage okay so you stay in the resentment rather than just yeah and eventually the res- resentment subsides but you haven't processed the yeah. underlying emotion yeah and that's why it can happen again and again and again and again yeah and this applies to many of your ladies who are in this cycle of rage with men and 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 the other thing is in that place you become severely spirit influenced yes and definitely. these are angry women who have had abusive things happen to them in yeah. the past who are now in the spirit world who are angry with men Mm -hmm. and they want a man like Alan so that they can just hammer him to death. Mm. That's what they want. Yeah. Right. And so so you you kind of ladies who do this choose men who you can hammer to death. Mm. And this is a big problem for you because it's actually Mm -hmm. engaging a lot of very bad and unloving behaviour which is degrading your condition quite rapidly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. While at the same time you believe it's good that you've got such a man. Mm. So you've got to be very careful about engaging the addiction because it's going to destroy your soul condition very, very fast. And this, many of you ladies do not realise how severely Mm. negative your soul condition actually is because of this problem. Mm. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Yep. So, so the key is to experience the anger, go into the resentment, feel the underlying emotion as to what you're not getting, and that's your addiction. So it's quite easy to identify your addiction there and then, and, and then to feel well, why do you need that particular thing from the man? What, 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 is that, what does that make you feel when you don't get it? Because that's what you're avoiding, what, what, what it makes you feel when you don't get it his the demand met and for a lot of you it's one of these two problems you don't feel loved or you don't feel worth anything when he doesn't give you exactly what you want Mm. yeah the danger of giving a child exactly what they want without any consideration of love or anything else in that process man it causes a lot of destruction of the child's condition yeah it's a big big issue and it's becoming more and more of a problem. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a lot of very young children who have severe demands and, uh, and they never release those demands in their entire life. They end up deep in the hells of the spirit world as a result. Yeah, it's a very bad problem. Okay, and if we go to Lorleen and we go to Fab on this side. So just stand, keep your hand up, Lorleen. <laughs> Mia doesn't know you, so you're going to keep that hand up. <coughs> uh, um, I um, am wondering if uh, I don't go to my rage um, with either parents uh, because when I do start, it's so hateful, I'm scared to feel that bad. Mm. Yeah, most of you have, like... I feel most of you have a m- severe problem with experiencing an overwhelming emotion of any kind, like rage included, right? But rage, shame, sadness, fear, terror, most of you have a, have a cut-off limit is what I'd call it, you know, like a speedometer limiter, you know, like, so imagine, you, you know, it's like a cruise control, you get to a certain point, beyond that feels a bit too much, so you, you put it back to, you set it at a certain point and you don't go beyond that with any of your emotions. And unfortunately, if, without going beyond that, you won't get to the depth of what's going on. So, so that's um, a choice though. Yeah. Okay. So um, because I see um, hate, so 
I judge it so badly. I mean, it is awful. I mean, you know, my question is, is hate like the most negative, rageful emotion you can experience? You, again, you're trying to quantify or qualify an emotion, which is actually the reason why you judge it, rather than just experience it. If yeah. it's in you, why not just choose to experience it without harming anybody with it? Yeah, okay. What, why do you need to know how destructive it is? You already know, don't you, how destructive it is? Like, yeah. um, uh, why, why do you need to go ahead and even judge it further? Like, to me... It's almost like saying to myself, before I begin to feel the emotion, I say, that emotion is so bad, that emotion means I'm so bad that, that I, I, I can't let myself feel it. Yeah, it led to another question that I had. Um, Can I just stop the other question first? I want to say a bit more, though, on that subject. What I notice a lot happening is that there is this uh, association, and, and isn't it interesting how many times now we're coming up with how we associate certain things with other things, and because of these linkages, we don't allow ourselves to process emotion, right? But there are so many internal associations that we have emotionally that cause us to, uh, to shut down the process of feeling emotion. You know, obviously, the, when, when we judge an emotion, we've already got a very negative viewpoint of having the emotion, right? So, so let's, whatever the emotion is, let's say this emotion is rage or hatred, right? Which we feel is a very negative emotion, so we judge the emotion. Now, in the process of judging the emotion, you're really just saying you, you shouldn't have it, aren't you? You're really just saying it shouldn't be there. But what's the truth? It's there. <laughs> so, so can you see the problem with judgment is that you're basically telling yourself something shouldn't be there when it's already there. Now, if it's already there, is judging it going to release it? No. So, so having a negative viewpoint towards an emotion is not going to help it to release it's only going to cause you to lock it up even further. And the problem with locking it up even further is that it then defines the rest of your life. So in other words, you start acting upon the hatred. Right? That's worse, isn't it, than having it. If you're going to judge anything, judge the action upon the emotion rather than the emotion itself, right? If you're going to judge something, instead of judging having the emotion, you'd be far better off judging the fact that you've acted upon it. You follow? It's far better to not act upon an emotion and feel it than it is to not feel the emotion and act upon it. Right? But what I see many of you doing is judging the emotion and then lo and behold, what happens? Situation gets triggered and hatred projected at somebody. Right? It's projected at somebody. So the poor person now is hated, feels hatred from you. If they're open to feeling the emotion, they'll, they'll absorb that. When the choice could have been to not judge it and therefore feel it, and if you felt it, then it wouldn't have been dumped on another person, which is the actual problem with that having with, with the emotion. Not, it's not having the emotion that's the problem, it's that what, what happens when you, when you deny it, right? When you try to shut it down. That's what the problem really is from a love perspective. So can you see, every time you judge emotion, every time you're afraid of it or you judge an emotion, what you're doing by choice is you're now consigning yourself to the inevitability of acting upon it. It's inevitable. It's in you. And you've judged it, you're trying to shut it down. Now you're highly, like I think it's inevitable that you will act upon it at some point in your future. Now, surely that's worse than actually noticing that it's there and feeling it. Now, again, the problem is these emotions that we judge, we have a linkage to our worth. So we go, okay, the fact that I've got hatred in me means that I am a bad person. No, it doesn't. 
you as a person from God's perspective were created perfect. So from God's perspective, having hatred in you is not so much the problem because it can be released. It's just mud that's stuck on you. And you can always have a wash. Uh, but many of you choose to not have a wash and wash the mud off. And instead you say, now this mud is who I am. It helps you identify, you even oftentimes identify yourself with that mud. So people even become proud of the fact that they hate somebody. They are, now they've reinforced their identity as a part of that. That hatred is now a part of their identity even. So giving up the hatred means giving up themselves is what they feel. And, and we've got to make sure we separate from, from who we are, our worth, who we are, our condition, from the actual motion being present within ourselves. This is one of your secrets to addressing emotion. If you can see that every emotion you have inside of yourself got there through some choice, either yours, many times yours, or someone else's, it got there, and, it, and, it, and since it got there and before it wasn't there, it can also leave there. It can also be released from there. If you understand that particular basic truth, then you can see that having an emotion doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means it's what you choose to do with that emotion that will cause you to become a more sinful person or not. Right? Now, you could choose to feel it and release it, and God would be overjoyed if that's what you chose to do. Or you can choose to suppress it and judge it or agree with it and keep it. And that is going to be detrimental to your future life. Right? You can make one or other of those two choices. So what I'm suggesting to you, Lorleen, every time you judge a hatred that's inside of you, Right? You're basically saying that, that you're now forcing that hatred to remain within you and as a result you are now inevitably, inevitably, inevitably going to act upon that hatred at some point in your future. Now from God's perspective that's worse than having the hatred inside of you and then choosing to release it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, second half. I think you've answered it, but I... Uh, I want, was going to ask that um, if I have that hatred in me, um, trying to get away from it has caused the facade to be nice. So if that is um, all facade, then... So you're now also worried that some of the nice parts of you are not nice at all and it's all just a facade to cover over the fact that you feel really bad. Yeah. Yeah. It, and isn't worry fear? And what do we do with fear? Is it real? Does that, is that necessarily going to be true? You're just afraid of it being true, right? So you're allowed to feel your fear and still think it might be true but still go ahead with the action of feeling the emotion. You follow? You're using that as an excuse to not feel the hatred. You're worried that if you feel the hatred that it's going to mean that you are actually a very hateful person and you're a terrible person. And as I've just explained to you, the truth is your hatred is not connected with your worth, but you have connected it with your worth. So you, so you now believe that if you have hatred that it also means your worth is lower right, from God's perspective, which is not true. It's just an emotion you have that you need to release. And the other problem is that because you've made it a part of your worth, your worth is a part of your true nature, and so you then now think it's a part of your true nature. Right? And I'm saying to you, no, have some confidence and faith in God that, and God's goodness that God doesn't create anything that has hatred in it. The hatred got in there through some other means. Right, So you have confidence in that and you go, okay, the hatred got in there through some other means. It can be released through some other means and in the end I can be without it. And it's not who I am. So your anger, your shame, your hatred, your fear, your terror 
and many of the other emotions we could list, none of them are who you are. They are all emotions that either exist or do not exist within you, which is very, very different. Thank you. You, and you'll see that with clarity the more emotions you feel. Does that make sense? You will. It's like the more emotions you feel and process, the more you realize that your emotions are not who you are. They are, you know, feelings that come and go. They pass through you, right? Now, some of them, if they're unloving and you allow them to pass through you, they will pass through you. And if you receive some God's love, they will never enter you again. But if you choose to do unloving actions, then negative emotions will enter you again. The law of compensation demands it. Right? And this is why it's very important later we discuss the laws and see what kind of relationship they have with our emotions. All right, well, um, it's time to uh, finish off there, I feel. Um, now, just before you go, um, I have not chosen anyone to do the feedback session with at this stage. And the main reason why I haven't is because I feel I would probably like to do a very rapid feedback session with individual after individual, if I could because I want to illustrate, um, not, not with all of you, but with some of you have written down on the, on the list that was up the back, um, because uh, I feel that many of you are asking me questions that are not valid for your current state. You're, you're not letting yourself feel truthfully what, are, what is your main problems at this point in time. You, what you're actually doing is you're hoping that these particular things are your main issues or problems. And what I would like to do is sort of illustrate that with you in the feedback session. Does that make sense? And this is where I feel many of you have learnt with your emotions to become very selective and therefore self-delusional with them. You're not seeing what your attractions are bringing you you're not allowing yourself to respond primarily to those particular things first. And so what I'd like to do is go through some of those things with you in a very sort of rapid way. I think there's about 15 or 20 people on the list and feel free to add to the list if you want to. And I'll see whether I get to you in, in, in one hour. And, but what I'd like to do probably for the first half an hour of it is that. And then I would like to perhaps address the whole, whole group together with some issues as well. All right? Because I feel there's one particular issue that still needs to be addressed with the entire group. So, so let's leave it like that. So if we can come back at um, 1.30. Can we make it 1.30 or thereabouts? That would be great. <laughs>